Francisco, a ton of playmakers, but Trent Williams, how do you game plan for a big guy like that? Yeah, uh, does a really good job in the run and pass game. Um, super athletic, strong. I mean, he's one of the top tier guys in the world. But uh, yeah, you just got to know what he likes to do when he's cutting you off, when he's reaching you, when he's pounding down on you. And then pass game, how he likes to set. He changes up his sets. He's got all the tools that he needs. Um, so got to have a good plan versus uh, when we go up against him. The Niners run D comes in number one. Just in general, how much does a team's ranking in certain categories impact what you might do, you know, based on that? Yeah, you look at it. You look at teams that um, have struggled. You look at teams that moved it and scored points and kind of blends into, you know, what how you want to try to attack them. But knowing that this is the second time we played them, so you look at the first game and see what we did well, see what we struggled with. Um, but that, that goes into... <clears throat> we look at all that stuff truthfully, Paul. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is McCaffrey kind of the key to all that? Like he's the one that kind of allows the deep pass. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if it's that. They're, they're, their unit. The strength of them is the unit. Um, talked about it today. They're, they're very physical. They're violent. They play for sixty minutes. They bring it for sixty minutes. There's no lulls and effort and, and hitting and. Um, you know, and I truthfully think that, you know, it's, it's, um, how do I say it? it it's actually kind of cool to see and watch that they're about the team, man. They don't care who gets touches, who scores, who has a big game. Like, they just want to win. That's, that's, that's pretty cool to see. And that's why they're where they're at right now. You know, they're unselfish. And when they get their chances, they make plays. So, I don't know if there's one key guy. I think they're all key guys, truthfully. You know, the strength is the unit. As good as, as, good as McCaffrey is, what is it about their offense? And even before he got there, it seemed that whoever they plugged in at running back would be pretty productive. What is it about that offense? Yeah, I think it's a, I mean, it's a blend. Of, they got a really good old line. I think that that's where it starts. And then schematically, they do some things that challenge you. And, you know, I've, you've heard me talk about Kyle before. Like, you know, when they when they got Christian, you know, they use his skill set accordingly. They use Juice's skill set accordingly. Kittle, Debo, Ayuk, Jennings, you know, all those guys. They use – they put those guys in positions to make plays, and that's, to me, a sign of a really good coach. When it happens at that many skill players at that level, what kind of stress does it put on the defense? A lot. you got to defend them all. You know what I mean? But we got to understand that within the call – what the call is taking away and what you're willing to give up. And we got to play to those strengths and weaknesses too. And um, hopefully minimize some of the weaknesses if they find it. But, you know, certain calls that are going to get called, we have to understand why those are getting called and what those are supposed to take away. And we need to execute those. Nick said yesterday that the best way to learn your side of the ball is truly to understand the other side of the ball. How is that emphasized during the week? Is it really just good on good, or do you guys see, or do you see offensive guys working with defensive guys after practice, or what might it be? Yeah, I think what he's talking about is schematically, you know what I mean? If you want to learn what a good front is and a good movement is, you ask an old line coach, you know what I mean? That's why probably he's talking about. Uh, he got that from me. But uh, <laughs> no. Uh, that was hubris. That is, that's not true. But, uh, um, yeah, I think that, you know, like there's always conversation with our, you know, with with Hump talking to Gardeck. You know what I mean? Hey, have you ever thought about this? Or this is what I'm trying to do. This is how you can negate it. I mean, there's that goes on every day. I mean, you know, on the field, in the meeting rooms, um, in the lunchroom, they talk about it. You know, hey, with this press technique, what do you like? What are you trying to do? Blah, blah, blah. So, um, you know, I think that just comes from you want to have a building that's a growth mindset building, kind of continually trying to learn and improve your own game. And to do that, you have to ask questions and say, and, you know, you have to be willing to say, like, I don't know what, what is going on here. What are you trying to do? You know, I think it, I think this, but is that really what you're trying to do here? So um, our guys have done a good job with that. Brock Purdy, what, what have you learned now going against him a couple of times? Really good player, plays at a high level. I mean, gets the ball quick, decision making, accurate, can make all the throws, runs the system, I mean, runs the offense. I mean, you know, he's in your top echelon of people. I mean, look at their record, look at his numbers, it is what it is. Why is he like Fred Warner such a problem? 
I wouldn't say problem. I would say he's a really good player. Um, diagnosis, um, you know, and again, not to minimize Fred, but I think that um, their entire unit, just like the offense, their entire unit is why guys stand out. You know what I mean? And he makes a bunch of plays because the D-line, you know, he knows that ball's going to have to get spit out, you know, in the run game. There's, you know, penetration and things like that. But um, I think he's <clears throat> a really fast processor. He can play sideline to sideline. He'll thump you in the run game in coverage. I mean, I don't know if there's a better coverage linebacker than him right now, whether it's zone or pattern match or man-to-man. -man. I mean, he can blitz. I mean, he's the, he's the full package. You mentioned throughout. Good to throughout, see you, Craig. Thank you, Sir Emily. That's all right. Throughout Fine. Kyler, <laughs> throughout Kyler's recovery process, you mentioned that there's been different boxes that you wanted to see checked. And then once he got back, the boxes were starting to get checked. Is there anything that has been unchecked that you would like to see in these coming Yeah, see, it does coming off a bye. Yeah, I mean, you know, with a little bit of rest, you know, I know he was feeling good Monday, but we'll see how he keeps going and progressing. And just little by little, what I want to see checked is him getting better every day. That's like all our guys. Outside of winning, what are realistic tangibles you want to see from the players and coaches this last four games? Improvement, just like the players right there. I want to improve every day um, and uh, do what is needed in all three phases to beat the 49ers. When you look at Brock when you're scouting background, what does it say about a guy, a quarterback, evaluating a quarterback and trying to find a guy late in the draft? Like, obviously, it's possible so many teams want to go for guys in the first round. Like, yeah, I mean, everybody's different and where guys get picked. I don't, you know, I think that he's, he's first of all, he's with a really good coach um, on a really good offense with a lot of weapons and a good old line. Okay, so take that into account. And then the fact that his production is through the roof and he plays the game how they want him to play the game. You know, he doesn't turn it over. He's very efficient. Like I said, like, you know, I didn't do him coming out of, out of, out of Iowa State. Um, I knew his coordinator. Uh, I worked with his coordinator a little bit. And um, everything that you see show up on tape right now is what he did in college. So he just translated it. And, and so many times, like, there's so many variables that going into a guy when they get drafted to hitting their ceiling or playing above their ceiling, all positions. And there's a lot of variables that go into that, the team, the system, the scheme, you know, who's their strength coach, who's their position coach, what's the coordinator like, you know what I mean? Who's in front of them? Who's in the room with them? There's, there's a lot of variables. That's why, you know, that's why a lot of guys hit and a lot of guys miss. You know what I mean? It's There's no perfect science to it. But, um, you know, I think they've done a really good job. And even throughout this year, um, having watched them throughout this year, I think he improves every game, truthfully. You know what I mean? Like you see him do some things that he didn't do last year, you know, and, and he's, he's a really good player. How do you think Michael Wilson did his return to practice? Good, good. We'll see him out there today, and uh, he's training along. Going back to that Pittsburgh play, fourth and short, fourth and one, before the 99-yard drive. Can you practice that at all? I mean, is it just like you know, big against big at the at the line of scrimmage, or how do you how do you even get ready? Yeah, to I mean, you know, pad level, technique, get off uh, where you're supposed to be. Practice that every day. Do we line up and butt heads on the one? No, um, but. Uh, I mean, in camp we did, you know. But, uh, yeah, I think in a little bit of that, too, is for a yard is your will, you know. So that goes into that, too. If you can measure that, that would be cool. But, um, yeah, it was it – was a, a lot of guys did what their coach to do, and they won at the point of attack, won a lot of one-on-one -on -one battles and knocked it down. Your four games left in your first season as a head coach, has it gone quickly or is it slow? Yeah, all a blur. No, day by day, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I wish we had more ball. But uh, focused on today, what we're doing today. Any record wear on you at all, Coach? No. Any updates on like LJ or Carlos? They doing good. Yeah, they're doing good. Because you're actually he's in LA now, uh, to kind of rehabbing it um, with the surgeon that did it. Um, but uh, they're they're doing good. I mean, they're kind of on schedule, and they're they're in, they're out a little bit, they're in and out. Um, but um, you know, we miss them. But it's good to see those guys around in the training room. They're around. They they inject some life and juice into the into the building, which those two, all three of them. But those two guys that you just asked about, they do that, and uh, we miss them.